cardio care doesn't start till 7.30. No, I'm supposed to meet a friend. What's cardio care? Too echoey. Come closer. I said, what's cardio care? <laughs> you nailed her, man. She's completely fish. You're going to have a sick old life to see. You stink at your job. Don't get mad at him. It's my fault. <laughs> I like to start my day with a shot of adrenaline. You'd think a heart attack victim would be more sensitive. I know, you're right. I'm sorry. You want a shot of adrenaline? Have a cup of coffee like a normal person. Doesn't this remind you of junior high? Of climbing the fence into the public pool and swimming naked? I never did that. Yeah, I mean, neither did I. I mean, I might have done it if somebody asked me. But, you know, I have this goody two shoes reputation. Yeah, I was a shy kid, too. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. We don't seem shy right now, paddling around in your speedo. This is part of the uniform. What uniform? Cardio care. What the hell is cardio care? Just, just think of us as a team of costume superheroes who fight heart disease. Guys, this is the woman I was telling you about. The judge? Amy, meet the guys. You don't look like a judge. Well, you don't look like a team of superheroes. What I don't understand is if the entire first printing sells out, why, why wouldn't there be a second printing? Oh, Fortunate Son is a notable achievement. Stalled? Cars stall. Books don't stall. Marked by grace and intelligence, it does what great novels are supposed to do. How can anybody buy the book if there aren't any books to buy? It challenges our beliefs, shakes our complacency. This is like some kind of voodoo catch-22. You won't reprint the hardcover because it's not selling well enough, and it's not selling well because it's sold out. And reinvigorates the form. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, th thanks a lot. Bye. And that's the nastiest review I could find. The upshot is, you're a genius. Donna, I'm not unhappy with the book's performance. And you shouldn't be. I just don't think that it's the kind of book that's going to make a big splash on the internet. Well, it, it should. You know why? It's a fabulous book. I I'm buying it for all my friends. <laughs> well, you can't. Go to work. You are not going to single-handedly turn this book into a bestseller. Huh. It's a great book. Thanks. Everyone says so. Yeah. Even the mean people at the New York Times. Really? Step our couple dispositional hearings. I think Stu has changed. Did you peruse the brief? Fundamentally changed, I mean. Do, do you believe people can do that? Change fundamentally? No. Following dispositions, we have delinquency trial. What about after a fatal heart attack? That's a life changing experience. If it had actually been fatal, Judge Gray, he wouldn't be alive. Now, the delinquency. Well, Stu was technically dead for 15 minutes. He was. Bruce! Bruce! I've got a brilliant idea. Vincent was 1,678 as of 737 this morning. Well, that sounds extremely old. <laughs> it's the position of his novel on cyberbook.web. Is that good? No. Good would be if he broke a thousand. It's a, a marketing threshold. When it breaks a thousand, they give it the attention it deserves. In the delinquency case, the case. Yeah, my idea is we all log on to cyberbook.web and buy multiple copies. That sounds expensive. Not if you immediately cancel your order. See, on the internet, the left hand doesn't know what the right hands do. Well, that sounds like fraud. Well, you know, white fraud. For someone we love. Well, I, I'm an officer of the court, Donna, so, so I can't do that. This means say no more. Uh, no, Donna, I mean I really can't do that. 
Okay, Donna, stop doing that. Right. Stop doing that, Donna. Donna. You... I don't care about White Frog. I care about whether or not you read the briefs. I'm leaving her in your hands. Are you up to speed on this? Because if I don't get back to the office in time for the staff meeting, Sean Potter is going to auto-destruct. Abrianna Franklin, beaten to a pulp a year ago by her father, placed with an aunt and uncle, subsequently sexually molested by said uncle. I'd like to stay, but they really are a stretch of the limit at DCF. Maxine, relax. It's just possible I may be able to do my job without your immediate supervision. Abriana, this is Dr. Blixman. She's here to help you. You have beautiful hair, Abriana. That's what my uncle used to say. I have beautiful hair. Um, I have to leave. But before I do, is there anything you need? Something to drink? Could you maybe find out what happened to Dookie? Dookie? My dog. There was no mention of a dog in the file. Not from this time, from last time. When you were taken away from your father. Uh, that was over a year ago. I was just thinking if he did better than me after that. I hope so. Um, well, I'll, I'll see what I can do. In September of this year, I enrolled undercover as a senior at Parktown High School in order to uncover a gambling ring. How old are you, Officer Gavin? I'm 24, Judge Gray. I made contact with a member of the Tamil youth gang known as the Leopards. The gang Mr. Chelvin leads? That's correct. I placed a series of wages, first on the high school's own athletic teams, then on televised sports. At the end of a couple weeks, my debt to the Leopards had grown to over $3,000, and I let it be known that I was unable to pay. Did the Leopards give you an extension? No, sir. They kidnapped me. Objection. Uh, prejudicial. They beat me, rolled me in a carpet, threw me in the trunk of a car, and removed my fingernail with a pair of pliers. And you think that kidnap is prejudicial. Did you recognize the young man who used the pliers on you? No. They wore screen masks. Then how is Mr. Chelvin implicated? I missed another payment deadline. Did you meet with Premin Chelvin? Yes, in the lunchroom. What was the topic of your meeting? Mr. Chevin told me that if I didn't have the $3,000 that I owed him, plus another $500 by the end of the day, that he would rip out all of my fingernails and feed me one of my testicles. Then what did you do? Are you kidding? I requisitioned the money and paid the son of a bitch. Objection, Your Honor. It's sustained. But barely. fatal heart attack. Near fatal, dear. Had it actually been fatal, then the man would be deceased. Uh, no. Stu was clinically dead for 15 minutes. All right, he died. Does that mean you have to sleep with him? I'm not sleeping with him. And what if I were? You're wrapped up in the romance of the thing. A brash, callow young man succumbs to a life-threatening experience. A decent, beautiful woman nurses him back to life. They fall in love and have copious sex. <laughs> you stop watching those war movies in the middle of the night, Mom. He's put you up on a pedestal. You like it up there, and you're going to have sex with him. Okay, can you stop shouting, have sex, at the top of your lungs? <laughs> What's that all about? That can't be good. Yeah, you can laugh all you want, Bruce, but I got a great outside shot. Yeah, if you say so. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's great. I have a message from your brother. He wants to know if you'd be free Saturday morning so you can uh, watch him fire off his rocket. Oh, that would be Peter. Thank you, Bruce. 
Well, I guess we'll find some place to sit. Over there, Amy. Enjoy your lunch. They didn't ask us to sit with them. I don't like it. Fraternization between social workers and the court system? It lacks discretion. What are you talking about? We're sitting together. Well, we have to. We're family. You could kill him, you know. If you sleep together, it could be fatal. See, the way I do it, Mother, nobody has to die. Then you're not doing it right. I have to go. I I'm, I'm not going to have sex with him. Oh, God bless you, honey. You've got the English patient written all over your face. Uh, notwithstanding your uh, excellent defense, Mr. Sharma, I am finding your client delinquent on all charges. I I'd like to call one character witness at the sentencing hearing, Your Honor. That's fine. Until then, I'm holding Mr. Chelford in custody. What's next? Dispositional hearing. People versus Pran. In the matter of stock fraud, the defendant has pled no contest on charges and awaits sentencing. Ms. Arroyo? Yes. Can you tell me the story? Without getting too technical, Judge Gray, Vanessa Pran used internet chat rooms to pass herself off as a 42-year-old stock analyst, make bogus assertions about the expected performance of particular stocks, then sell. The Securities Exchange Commission calls this pumping and dumping. Janice Samuels appearing for Vanessa Pran, Your Honor. My client is a prodigy, not a criminal. She made her first stock market trades at the age of 12 through an account set up by her parents. These were legal trades? That's correct. However, soon after, young Miss Pran crossed over to the dark side. Objection. Uh, this is a juvenile court sentencing hearing, Miss Samuels. We allow a certain leeway for a sense of humor. Your Honor, Vanessa has already apologized and repaid the victims of her suspect trades. In the hope that we would not file charges against her. What amount are we talking about? Um, $126,000. Give or take. That was off of initial investment of $10,000. Well, this is not simple. That's why we did not want it dealt with at the juvenile court level. No offense. Well, I'm going to need details in order to discern whether Vanessa committed a conscious premeditated crime or simply made a high-spirited mistake. That means delving into the details of arcane financial transactions. Is Your Honor certain she wants to wade through those murky waters? Your Honor appreciates counsel's concern, but um, let's give it a shot, shall we? I appreciate your coming in. Yeah, I'm retired. I had a big day planned, pinching aphids. You're looking for the dog? That's correct. Since you were the social worker who placed the child, I thought you might uh, be of some help. Well, I think sure have changed around here. If social workers suddenly have time to go gallivanting after duck trolling dandies. I beg your pardon? It's a breed. You remember the breed? I remember everything about this case. Child was beaten to a pulp. As I recall, she was in danger of losing an eye. They managed to save her eye. The dog was beaten, too. I called animal control to come and get it. Do you think the poor thing was destroyed? Shouldn't you be worried about children instead of dogs? I am. That all you needed? Yes. Ms. Grossman, finding the dog is important to the child. I don't think I'm wasting time. Tell yourself whatever you got her. That's my philosophy. Who's that? She used to work here. Have you placed the Gabrella twins yet? Or had a chance to speak with Lester Navarro's probation officer? I'll get to it. See, this is why I hate Sanctuary House. You're spreading yourself too thin. Why were you having lunch with Bruce Van Exel? We're working out the details of gun court for the prosecutor's office. Alternative sanctions for kids with firearm violations. It's very cutting edge. Why? In my experience, 
It's best for our people not to mix with their people. Oh, my God. It's the black thing. Don't be ludicrous. Why does color always have to enter into it? It has nothing to do with race. You know, so what if Bruce and I have decided not to accept the America of two separate realities? What if we're just two guys who happen to enjoy each other's company? Or maybe you think I'm just not cool enough to have a black friend. Your upbringing wasn't exactly culturally diverse, was it, Sean? I admit it. Bruce is my first African-American friend. Ah, you are friends, not just colleagues. Yes. It's a bad idea for DCF to even have an opinion on the matter. That's my point. We, social workers, should not mix with them, court personnel. It's my opinion, not DCF's. Sean, why are we always fighting these days? Is there anything we need to discuss? Would you just please be so kind as to call Lester Navarro's probation officer? Certainly. After I see a man about a dog. I have been principal of Parktown High for eight years. Can you give us a snapshot of the student body? Well, Parktown is a very culturally diverse school with over 2,000 students. 37% Asian or South Asian, 26% Hispanic, 24% African American, and the other 13% are white or mixed race. What about gang activity? Oh, God. Gangs are the bane of my existence. Two African-American gangs, Vietnamese, Cambodian, three Hispanic gangs. And the dominant gang? Currently, the Tamil gang, the Leopards. Would you call it a dangerous school? We do the best we can. Metal detectors, armed security patrols. But yes, unhappily, I would call it a dangerous school. Last year, we had two homicides. And this year? No homicides. What about rapes and assault? Last year, 38. And this year? Five. To what do you credit this success? Ms. Mark? Could it be that you don't want to give my client credit for the improvement of conditions at your school? I know how this sounds. But yes, Prim and Shelvin is the reason for the improved conditions at Parktown. If Judge Gray decides to remove Mr. Shelvin from the school and put him in jail, what do you think will happen? In my opinion, things will go back to the way they were. Why? Because he is in control of the school. He's in charge. The other gangs know it, and they respect him. In his absence, the assaults will climb. Yes, because a gang war will erupt. And the homicides? Yeah, yeah, we get the point, Mr. Sharma. All do you respect, Judge Gray. I think the actual words must be spoken. If you jail my client and remove him from the school, you are also, in effect, sentencing two other children to death. Ms. Mock, are you asking me to release this gang leader back to your school? Yes, Your Honor. Pragmatically speaking, someone's going to rule the roost. And Prim and Chauvin is better than most. Well, I'm going to need some time to think about this. Miss Prynne, you are obviously a very intelligent little girl. Yes, I know. Your Honor, would you please instruct Ms. Arroyo not to condescend quite so transparently to my client? Apologies all around. How long was it between the time you started making trades and the time you started stealing from people? Objection. Ms. Arroyo. Apologies all around again. Your Honor, it's confusing. One moment I can't refer to the defendant as a little girl, the next minute I have to treat her with kid gloves. Welcome to juvenile court. I didn't mean to steal. It was like a game. Like bluffing in high stakes poker. I didn't know it was wrong. You started out making legal trades, didn't you? Yes. I traded longer term mid caps on large exchanges. How did you choose those stocks? Technical analysis. Please, explain that to Judge Gray. I tracked the structure of the price action, the flux indicators, and taught myself stock movements and exits. Objection. To what? 
Well, maybe it's more a concern than an objection, Judge Gray, but there are certain nuances and gray areas here. And if the prosecution asks questions which imply guilt, and then my client responds in a way that signifies innocence, but the court is unable to understand her. Are you questioning my abilities? No, Your Honor. Not at all. Good. Let's move forward to the questionable trades, shall we? It was an NR7 day. Short trending with no spikes, and I was long in a microcap called ZTEC, and facing a negative divergence. I wondered how to gap up through the compression price. So, I logged onto some chat rooms and pumped that ZTEC was going to take a write down in the third quarter for later sell off, providing a cushion of profit margins. The stock price jumped, I dumped, and took the profit. Ms. Koslowski Pant, if you don't stop doing that, I'm going to find you in contempt of court and put you in jail. Any objections? Did you check with a duck trolling dandy rescue group? The what? Most breeds have a group of kindly fanatics who feel charged by God to protect them. I'm sure if they found out about your dog, they'd find the resources to save him. God, I wish human beings had those kinds of benefactors. They do, Mom. You're one of them. Okay, Mom. I gotta get going. So... Hi, Vincent. Hey. Uh, it's time to go. No, no. Like I said, I gotta go, so... Sure. Heaven forbid you two should spend any time in the same room. Did you break a thousand? I beg your pardon? On cyberbook.web? Uh, I don't, I don't know what that means. Apparently it's a marketing threshold. A thousand. Oh, um, I didn't write the book to be a bestseller. Oh, no, I know, I just thought... I've been getting great reviews, yeah, really great reviews. And if I needed some kind of financial validation, which I don't, I would have accepted the offer from the film company. You mean Hollywood? Yeah, $40,000 option. Which I'm not taking. You know why? Because the book is itself forty thousand dollars that's a lot of money to pass up you really don't get me at all mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh honey that's so funny mm. Mm -hmm. amy mm -hmm. crack a dawn saturday why Launch time. T minus 36 hours. Didn't Bruce give you the message? Oh, your, your rocket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you'll be there? Uh, Gen 4 Houston. Thanks for dinner, Maxime. Good night, everyone. Houston, we do not have a problem. going for the record. What time is Stu picking you up? Is Stu your new boyfriend? Suck on the glass again, honey. Go for the record. I'll time you. Let's go to the living room. Woohoo! Maxine? Can I have a private moment with Amy? Uh, certainly. I'll go and see if Lauren has sucked herself into an alternative universe. Saturday morning is really important to Peter. Yeah, the, the rocket whoop de doo <laughs> He designed and built that thing himself. It's taken months. Why would he do that? I don't know. I don't understand why, but he needs to shoot higher and faster and farther than all the other geeks in the group. The, the point is, you're going to blow him off. Why does everybody in this family think they know exactly what I'm going to do? Amy, you're going to blow him off. And he, and he won't say anything to you, but his feelings will be hurt. I am not going to blow him off. You've sort of built him up to be this semi-substitute for Vincent, which is fine. But Peter thinks this rocket is his chance to impress you, and if you blow him off, it'll hurt him. And I, I just wanted to say that. Good night.
do? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not wearing any clothes. Yes, I can see that. Want to take off all of your clothes? What if somebody comes in? Don't be chicken. Just pretend we're in junior high. We snuck in, took our clothes off. I told you I never did that. You said nobody asked. I'm asking. Here, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna go underwater, and I'll hold my breath for as long as I can. When I come up, you can either be naked in the pool with me, or screeching out of the parking lot. We took your damn time to sign it. Take deep breaths. You don't want to put stress on your heart. I know what you were thinking this morning. My God, I must be nuts to sleep with a guy who might drop dead any second. We aren't sleeping together. We must be honest with each other. Since I woke up in that hospital, I've dreamed of making love to you. And to be honest, I think maybe you're having so many thoughts. Well, I don't always act on my daydreams. We don't have time not to. Is it your heart? Papsidana, Captus Vara. What? El Camino de Santiago. Tambamache. The caves of Sasso Spico. Cooperstown, New York. Do any of these ring a bell? The, the Baseball Hall of Fame? They're all pilgrimages. Sacred places. You died, so now you have to go to the Baseball Hall of Fame? I saw myself this morning through your eyes, and I realized I can't spend the rest of my life being a coronary case, wearing a heart monitor and waiting to die. I mean, in Sri Lanka, there is a giant footprint in the rock on top of a mountain called Samanalakanda. They say it's where Adam first stepped on Earth after being expelled from Eden. I mean, now as a judge, shouldn't you see this place? I mean, exile, punishment, I mean, that's your thing. I have other things. I wish you'd go with me. I know you can't. But I'd like for us to make love before I go. Just when? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, of course. Why wait? If it were for you, I'd already be gone. I can't tell if you're sincere or if you're just using some kind of spiritual opportunism to get laid before heading off for vacation. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna dive back down to the bottom of the pool. When I come back up, you'll either be here or you won't. Oh, crap! First up is a sentencing hearing from Prim and Chelvin. Then two probationary reviews and a rehab follow-up. What about little Miss Ivan Boski? It's the last thing this afternoon. Do you smell chlorine? I went for a swim. Hmm. F for fitness. That would explain it. Can we go over rehab options for drug offenders at lunch? Certainly. I'm, I wouldn't want to disrupt your plans. What plans? You're not having lunch with Sean Potter today? No, not today. Is there something you want to ask? What could you two possibly have in common? Except for the fact that you both work with members of the Gray family. Maybe we bonded like men do in times of war. Donna. Something wrong? Oh, it's Vincent. I bought and returned his book over 200 times and he still hasn't broken a thousand. Look at it this way. If he found out that his success was due to your log rolling, he'd be humiliated. He wouldn't have to know. Sometimes you do things for people you care about behind their backs, whether they like it or not. I'm 
get you when everyone's in place. No, I'm not looking to adopt a dog myself. I'm, I'm, well, I'm sure they are lovely animals. No, I, I do consider myself a dog person, yes, but certainly not on your level. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Uh, what I'm trying to do is track down a duck trolling dandy that was badly beaten about a year ago and that your organization may have saved. Could I speak with you? Uh, could you hold on just a moment, please? Maxine, I've tried to be laissez-faire about this, but I'm going to have to put my foot down. There are children right here, right now, who need your attention. Lots of them. An infinite number, in fact. And yet you insist upon dedicating valuable time to a dog. Oh, put a sock in it, Sean. I beg your pardon? I'm sorry, this is not Save the World Day. Tomorrow, I will dedicate my entire being to the betterment of the universe. But today, I am going to help one particular little girl named Abriana Franklin find her damn dog. Yes, I am trading the good of the many for the good of the one. For that, I am willing to burn in hellfire for all eternity. Therefore, you do not scare me. Now step away from my desk, please. Step away from the desk. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Well, I can do better than describe the dog. I can provide you with a picture. Samuels would have me believe that Vanessa Pran looked at Wall Street and saw that it was corrupt. So she played the game. She did what she had to do in order to win so that she could use her ill-gotten gains to go to Harvard Business School and work on Wall Street. A am I the only one who sees a kind of vicious circle here? Vanessa Pran is admitted to being guilty of fraud. In addition to the reparations she has made to her victims, I am also assessing Ms. Pran all court costs, including the cost of the prosecution. Furthermore, Ms. Pran will pay for the cost of a forensic accountant who will scrutinize all of her trades in case other reparations need to be made. Oh, oh, I, I'm, I'm not done. I am also banning Vanessa Pran from trading until her 18th birthday. It's obvious to me that Your Honor did not understand the minutiae of these transactions and was unable to navigate the complexities posed by the case. Uh, let me explain it in language that you'll understand. Vanessa Pran went online and leaked erroneous inside information that ZTEC had been extended the imputed value of a loan of Prime Bank Securities, a type of financial instrument that doesn't even exist, as a prelude to a rights offering which she stated caused a short squeeze. How many lies is that? How many lies is what? Miss Samuels, how many lies is that? Three or four, Your Honor. Ooh, close, Miss Samuels. But it's five outright lies. Now, are you trying to tell me that in telling five outright falsehoods, Vanessa Pran was, was playing a game? That she was bluffing? And, and do you want me to fall for the same jargon and lies and obfuscation as those misguided online investors who believed her? <laughs> for your information, Judge Gray was a big shot corporate lawyer on Wall Street before we got her. <laughs> I'm sorry. What I'm doing here is forcing you to find another pathway in life. Try to walk in the light. I hate you. Yes. Dookie. 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 Yes. I'm sorry I was rude to you in court. Judge Gray, I, I know you and Vincent are mad at each other, and, and, and I shouldn't get involved in family matters. And, and, and like you said, cheating is cheating. So well, at least you were trying to help Vincent, just more than I was doing. I really am angry at him, but um, I'm trying not to be. Cyberbook.web cut me off. They caught you? 
Also, they're sending a message to all the other online merchants warning them about me. I'm a pariah on the World Wide Web. Well, you, you could put an initial in your name. Start over. Would that work? I'm pretty sure. Did you learn sneaky stuff like that when you were a corporate warlord? <laughs> no. I learned that from my mother. They didn't know his name was Juki, so uh, they gave him a new name. Kismet. It's a little bit snootsy, but... He looks happy. I think he is. He found a good home. Thank you, Mrs. Gray. If you want to see him, maybe I can make some arrangement. That's okay. Don't you want to see him? Well, he's happy now. Maybe he forgot all the bad times. I don't want to remind him. Maybe... Someday, if you ever find me a nice place to live, I could see him. Then we'd be even. Like, equal. Could I keep this? I think that would be all right. Before I pass sentence, uh, I have a couple questions. Yes, ma'am? Why do you get straight A's? Beg your pardon? Straight A's and a 93 percentile in your SATs? My pants require good marks of me. Or, or what? Or what? Will they, for example, rip out your fingernails if you don't get good marks? No. I respect their wishes. Well, Mr. Chalvin, why didn't you require your son to quit the Leopards? We didn't know about Freeman's involvement with this gang until he was arrested. Leopards don't simply let you quit. And even if they did, one of the other gangs would take me out. They kill you? Yes. Oh, great. If I want to save lives, I should... Simply think of a sentence that satisfies the law, yet allows you to remain the mightiest warlord at Parktown High. Some probationary time, some community service, nobody dies, everybody's happy. I, I recently heard of a place called Samanalakanda. Do you know it? Something to do with back home in Sri Lanka. It's a sacred peak. Mr. Chilton, I, I want you to tell your son about Samanalakanda, because it is a story of exile and penance. I, I will not participate in a contrivance which consigns you to the role of a career criminal, no, no matter how many people benefit from it. Prime Minister Chelvin, I'm, I'm committing you to DCF for three years with a recommendation for incarceration. However, I will reconsider that disposition under the following conditions. That you sever all ties with the Leopards and any other youth gang, and that you and your family relocate to another town. Your Honor, I, I must protest. You're asking my client's family to rip themselves away from the Tamil community, or permit their child to be incarcerated. No, Mr. Sharma. Penance and exile, I understand. We will do it. I hope you will use your considerable intelligence to save your own life, since it is very possible that I have sacrificed someone else in order to give you the chance. I'm sorry, Ms. Mott. All rise. I didn't smash your skull. You're lucky I'm not a robber with a gun. Well, that's what you get for skulking home at four o'clock in the morning. Is the heart patient still alive? I'm not sneaking in. I'm sneaking out. 
Well, what kind of fool leaves the house at four o'clock in the morning? You're looking at her. Ma, I was not out having sex with Stu Collins. Stu Collins is, is working a tramp steamer or hopping a freight. You drove him out of town. He's on a pilgrimage looking for the meaning of life. I did consider having sex with him, though. You're joking. You know, one day, I'm going to find a man who thinks that I'm the meaning of life. Amy, don't be drippy. The best you can hope for is a man who doesn't worry about the meaning of life when he's with you. So why aren't you sleeping? Did you find that little girl's dog? The dog is living happily ever after. It's the child whose life keeps falling apart. She told me she hopes one day she'll be equal to the dog. Well, if you and Lauren are up and around when I come back, let's go have French toast at Callahan's. Okay. Now we're talking about the true meaning of life. I didn't want to miss the big launch. Well, still, I didn't actually expect you to. I... Next up is a great contender, Peter Gray. It's great you came. Okay, no, I... Go for it. It's... It's nice that you asked. Peter, you're next up. Oh. You want to do the honors? No! No, I don't know how. Oh, come on, just push the button. No? Yeah. Ready? Uh, Five. Four. Three. three two, two. One. Deceleration. Oh. It's slowing down. It's not going to reach apogee. It will too. Burn is stuck. It's just coasting now. Wait. Wait for it. Yes. One thousand. One thousand. Yes. I broke a thousand. <laughs> I broke a thousand. <laughs> Oh, you have no idea what that means! I broke breaking a thousand and... Oh, you have no idea! Oh, I broke a thousand! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I broke a thousand! I broke a thousand! I really did! I broke a thousand! I broke a thousand! Coming up next on TNT's Prime Time in the Daytime, an investigation points to a shocking group of suspects. All the drama of law and order is next on TNT.